What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Turn the Jets podcast. I'm your host, Will Parkinson, at Will Pollard on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Host your 32 pod, TOJ Talks. Unfortunately, a second week in a row, not a victory Monday. The Jets obviously fall yesterday in London to the Vikings 23-17. Rough game. Uh, extremely rough first half. You know, that was... Uh, that was not pretty, uh, you know, obviously, and I'll get into it a little bit and just kind of where, you know, where things stand here, uh, you know, going into week six rivalry game, playing first place against the Buffalo Bills. So uh, I guess not all is bad, obviously, but, you know, I guess kind of starting off at the top, this is a loss that, you know, the Jets losing to the 5-0 and Vikings, you know, at this point, or, you know, 4-0 going to the game. No shame in that. It's the, it's kind of the way they lost in, in terms of the the start they had. You know, to this game on uh, on Sunday morning, it was kind of a repeat. We feel like the last two weeks have been repeats of Jets games we've seen in, in you know in the Robert Sala era. You know, the Broncos game last week felt a lot like the Falcons and Giants games of last year, were just kind of lifeless in the rain. This felt exactly like the Falcons game uh, of 2021, where the Jets go into London and there was some excitement coming off that Titans game. They get to that game and. Um, laid an egg in the first half and just didn't have enough to come back in the second half despite a strong effort. And that's obviously a much different Jets team, much different matchup, et cetera. The Jets just start this game off extremely slow uh, on both sides of the football. You know, but generally speaking on offense, it was, it was putrid. And I think, you know, I'm not going to get up here and tell you that Aaron Rodgers played well yesterday. He did not. I'm not going to tell you that the offensive line was good. I don't think really many people on the offense at all were very good. So play calling coaching, and, and we'll get into it here in a minute, but Jets and I have such a, Terrible start, you know, frankly, on offense. Again, they find themselves down 10 nothing. finally getting some momentum on offense, finally put together a drive after an Aaron Rodgers pick six. I think it's only the fifth time in his career that's happened. Uh, by comparison, I believe Peyton Manning and Drew Brees are in the high 20s in their career pick sixes. Like, this is not something that happens. The, the Vikings fooled Rodgers on that play, and, you know, credit to them. It's something that, you know, they, they saw on tape. Rodgers likes to make that check to the three slants, and um, Van Ginkle drops, great player, and he's able to pick six it. Lazard has a drop there. You know, they drop a ball. Brandon Allen drops a ball the next drive. Then Rodgers forces it on third down. And um, something you just never really see him do. He got beat up. He obviously got hurt, banged up, and, you know, early in this football game. And, you know, kind of thought the season was over again. Um, you know, luckily, obviously, Rodgers able to get out of there with, you know, just a, a sprained ankle. Um, you know, and it, it just was one of those games where it felt like things could not, just couldn't figure it out. Um, eventually, they do get some momentum. They go down there. It's 10 and. Jets are driving first and, you know, I think it was second and two. Um, they're second, third and two. They run the ball up the middle two times in a row with Braylon Allen. And, you know, oh, hey, everyone complained about us running with not running with Braylon Allen short yardage. Here you go. Running out of pistol there. You know, Brennan Bates had probably the worst game I've ever seen a player have yesterday and missing blocks left and right. You know, Braylon Allen stuffed. And it was just like, just take the three points, man. It's te- you'll get yourself to 10 to three. It's a one possession game. Ease, calm the thing, you know, scoring a touchdown there. Yeah. It would have been nice. But to me, that was one of those chances. Like just relax, get yourself some points, get yourself back in the football game. You know, eventually, you know, the Jets are able to get to what? 17 to three. And uh, man, it, it just offensively was rough. I, I felt like the game plan didn't make a lot of sense. You know, they had some nice moments at times to Garrett Wilson. They fed him 22 targets, which is a heck of a lot of targets. Um, you know, at times, some nice stuff to Tyler Conklin. At, at once in a while, some nice stuff to, to Braylon Allen, but not too, too much. Just couldn't really get much going. Lazard obviously has the touchdown, but he also has four drops. Mike Williams just was not involved really at all. It felt like I think he had one catch, and, and other than that, didn't do much. And, you know, obviously at the end of the game, we'll get to in a second, you know, it doesn't turn his head and bad throw by Rodgers. But, now, Brees Hall's performance the last couple weeks, I, I would say in general, has been extremely concerning. Um, I, I understand he's an incredible player. There is no question about it. But the way he's run the football, and I understand the offensive line has not been great. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, Olu's not bad, but he's, you know, he's a two, two games into his career, right? Like, this is what happens, but no Morgan Moses hurts. And, and I get that. It's a good front, it's a good defense, all those things. But like, and the play calling sucks. Like, all of that's fair, but there has been some moments for Brees Hall where, where things have been open. And uh, he's not been good in pass pro, in my opinion. Not that I'm expecting him to be an elite level pass you know, protector, but if you're in there to pass protect, you got to, you know, it's got to be decent enough, decent enough to be in there. Um, 
out of the backfield hasn't been quite as explosive. Doesn't feel like he's been putting his foot in, foot in the ground and going. It's kind of like this tentativeness when he when he's cutting and looking explosive. And then in the run game, I, I think a play that encapsulates it perfectly. And we talked about it in the Badlands in the chat a bit, but you know they run that patented. You know, Brees Hall toss play, student body right, student body left is, you know, back in old terminology. And Brees didn't make a single guy miss, didn't hit the hole right, and gains two yards. And, like, that play was blocked perfectly. Like, it was open, man, and, like, still didn't do anything with it. So, I don't know what's going on, you know, whether it's mental, physical, both. Um, obviously, everything needs to go right from a running back perspective, but I, he's just not making guys miss right now. He does not look explosive at all. So, um I think Joe categorized it on last night as him being a little mopey. Uh, I would agree. Kind of just it's a, it's a little bit of poutiness. I'm not really sure. Kind of, again, what's going on there. But they've got to get that situation figured out and figured out quickly. He is too damn good uh, to be, you know, rushing for 15 yards a game and one catch or two catches. Again, Garrett Wilson, I thought, finally, you know, looks like the Garrett Wilson of what we expected. And especially in the second half, I feel like the drive for the touchdown to cut the lead – uh, I believe 20 to 17 at that point. It was like, wow, Garrett's back to being Garrett. He was making guys miss. He was out and, you know, catch, making a catch after catch. They used him as a running back. It was probably the only cool play of the entire game from a Nate Hackett perspective. And, you know, once he gets in that touchdown, it's like, it felt like it was like, oof, kind of shackles are off. Garrett's back. Um, again, Conklin had a good, you know, had a good afternoon. Um, you know, he's been, he's a guy that, you know, you get, you get your six for 60 and, you know, maybe hopefully get in the end zone at some point. Alan Lazard, the enigma of Lazard, like one or two big plays. He has the touchdown, which is awesome. Um, you know, fourth of the year. He also has four drops. And, you know, if he catches a ball that's a perfectly thrown back shoulder fade to him, he, you know, that hits him right in the hands. The Jets win the football game. So um, offensively, they got to figure it out. Devontae Adams solves a lot of problems. If they do out, go out and get him, hopefully by the time I'm recording on, on Wednesday or Thursday afternoon, he'll be a Jet. Um, he can beat. He can be a guy that can beat man. He can go into the role um, that kind of Garrett's playing right now. That short to intermediate guy. Garrett can kind of go into a guy that can maybe stretch the field a little bit more, make this offense a little bit more explosive. He needs probably less Alan Lazard. Um, needs much less Xavier Gibson. Uh, maybe less you know Brennan Bates and Jeremy Ruckert in the passing game. So um, overall, I think the Jets have to go get Devontae because they have no other choice right now. Um, this offense is not explosive enough. They're not doing enough things right. They got to get in the lab a little bit and say our five best run plays. What are our 10 best pass plays? Can we get some motion? They ran motion all camp. I talked about it on this podcast over and over again. There's motion and motion and motion and Garrett Wilson, the slot and moving them around and taking deep shots. And like, they're not doing any of it. So um, Rogers, Hackett, Sala, the whole, the whole brain trust, get in the room, wipe these last two games. They have got to have a different game plan. Um, you know, on Monday night against Buffalo. Defensively, I thought, Overall, really good performance. Obviously, the Jets passing, you know, defense is fantastic. They made Sam Darnold look quite poor. Um, they got screwed on a couple holding pass interference penalties. The Jets are kind of physical and a handsy group anyway, so um, it happens. I I'm not overly concerned about it. I thought DJ Reed was spe spe spectacular. Um, Quincy Williams, another really good game. You know, I, I thought Jamie Sherwood had moments, but, you know, overall, again, some of the safety play was actually, you know, slightly decent. I thought Tony Adams, Isaiah Oliver were putting – Rough one on one situations with Justin Jefferson, but you know, overall we're okay. Um, they limited Jefferson, you know, uh, you know, on Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning. Um Will McDonald had a big, you know, big time sack, had some pressures, but over you know, Leonard Taylor had a moment. Um I, this defense still needs another pass rusher. They still don't get enough pressure at all. Sam Darnold had a bunch of coverage sacks, um, which is fine, but it, it's in other games they're gonna need more, you know, more and more juice there. Quincy Williams called out the defense after the game and, and, you know, uh, Sauce Gardner had a really weird afternoon, another weird afternoon, him and Brees Hall again. It's, it's not beating these guys up. These guys are special players. They're founding foundation, building blocks, awesome dudes. But like Sauce gets run over. It's like, oh my God, it's a concussion, but then he's cleared to come back in and he doesn't come back in for a quarter and a half, which is really weird. It's the second time that's happened this year where he's kind of gone out and there's not really a lot of explanation as to why he didn't come back in and what's going on. Um, Sauce is not tackling anybody right now, like not even trying to tackle anybody. And I understand he's a slighter corner and his job is to cover people. Uh, teams are just running at the Jets outside so that they can literally run at Sauce Gardner. And he's got to put it, he's got to try. Like, And I'm not saying he's not trying, but it, it doesn't look great on tape. He's got to put his body in the way or do something um, 
start cutting out guys. I don't know what it's going to be, but you know, it can't. What the the biggest run of the day for the Vikings? They got lucky. It got called back. Was hey, we're going to run at Sauce, and they just it it works. Um, they, they've got to get that figured out. So um, I don't know what's going on with Sauce. He's not playing like the Sauce Gardner we've seen the last couple of years. He dropped an easy interception. That is the difference in the game. If he catches that, he had three penalties yesterday. Um, I, I would just say like right now. Big time look in the mirror moment for a lot of these Jets guys. Um, season's still young. They're still awesome players. They're still great people. The whole nine yards. No one's saying any of that. But it, it's feelings like there's been so much pressure for them to be good. And they like assume this elite level role. And they haven't played like it this year. And that's okay. There's plenty. There's 12, you know, whatever, 12 games left. Got to wipe it, though, and, and get it corrected, like, now. It's get away from football today. Come back in the facility tomorrow, ready for war with a Buffalo Bills team who will preview the rest of the week, but who's talked a fuck ton of shit about you for the equivalent of the last six, seven months calling you soft. Tell you know, Deion Dawkins talking about how you guys are all Instagram and Twitter guys, and you don't really you're not really about that life and the whole thing. I don't know, man. If I, this is a big look in the moment, you know, kind of moment for Robert Sala. They've had they've done well against the Bills in, at MetLife or it's a big moment for Nate Hackett, for uh, the rest of this Jets defense, who's you know, it's been awesome, but, you know, big challenge, obviously, on, on Monday night. And this Jets offense to wipe it and get back to a lot more empty, a lot more two-back, a lot more motion, taking some shots, um, not just walking up to the line of scrimmage and getting out to, you know, getting up to the line of scrimmage with five seconds left on the play clock. like. And lastly, and Joe Connor covered this, and, and again, I'll I'll kind of recap a little bit more of this game, but mostly move into the Bills. Uh, you know, in the next episode, season's not over by any means. The Jets are playing for first place on Monday night. They have a lot of work to do, but you know, I think the good news is, hey, we we should have beaten the we should have won the last two games, and we played our like F level football. And if we just start playing anywhere near our potential, we're going to be really good. The biggest thing for me is like Robert Sala. Uh, some of these Jets players, Quincy Williams had some really pointed comments at the end of the game. Uh, Garrett Wilson had some very pointed comments. I believe Tyler Conklin had some as well. Um, he's had some over the last kind of two weeks of like, Rodgers, hold yourself accountable. Um, I, I'm not saying Robert Sala needs to be fist pumping every time. And again, it's a lot of semantics. But like, do you look interested in the game? Do you look interested in your job? Because at the end of the day, not everyone sees what goes on behind closed doors. Most fans don't see that. I don't know why it would have been so hard to come out yesterday or even today. You go, hey, we sucked in the first half on uh, on you know on Sunday morning. It's unacceptable. We will get it corrected. We will get it fixed. Hang with us. We understand that there's high expectations. It's early in the season. But what we did in the first half is unacceptable. And as hard as we fought in the second half to get back in that game, we should have never been in that position because we should have played four quarters. Fine. No one's going to crush you. You're not calling out the players. You're not saying anything. All you're saying is we're holding ourselves accountable instead of we'll get it right. Trust us. We'll figure it out. Like, I understand it's coach speak. I, I get it. But the fan base sometimes just wants to hear you have you have a little bit more than the, every time the camera cuts to you, you look like you want to be anywhere else but coaching a football game. Um, I know Robert Sal is a great guy and, you know, he's had some nice moments here, but the record is what it is. And the end of the day, he's going to start winning games, or he's not going to be the Jets' head coach, uh, you know, past this year. So, um, frustrating Sunday, for sure. This is a man's game. This is a toughness, mental preparation, et cetera. And the Jets, the last couple of weeks, too many penalties, too many drops, too many missed assignments. Um, all this stuff's got to get cleaned up, and they got to play with their hair on fire Monday night, like the season's on the line. Um, this is a team they've had success against in my life, and getting back to three and three. Getting going to Sunday Night Football, getting back into a somewhat normal schedule, you know, is crucial here. So um, appreciate you for listening. A little bit more fired up on this episode, but uh, we'll be back probably in, in better spirits on uh, on Thursday afternoon and, um, you know, talking some Jets bills. Appreciate you for listening. We'll talk to you guys later this week.